College Football 25 had an update a little over a day ago, and they made some changes to the coaching adjustments that they didn't tell us about. So if you guys want to see what the best coaching adjustments are to use post-patch in College Football 25, stick around after the intro. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your College Football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to go over the best offensive and defensive coaching adjustments to use in College Football 25 because the latest patch has changed how a lot of these things work. But before I do, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help or more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top hand comment. On offense, though, not a lot changed. The only thing that changed is ball carrier itself. There used to be a glitch where you could use uh, spin moves still while having it ball care on conservative. Uh, that's something that they fixed in both Madden and College Football 25. You can't do that anymore. So to me, if you want to use ball care to conservative, you only really want to do this if you're running with the quarterback or something of that nature. Uh, but like I said, I already went over uh, you know the offensive and defensive adjustments. So I'm going to try to just stick to the ones that change because I already did go over this in, at length in a previous video. But the only offensive adjustment that I would ever use in this game, aside from tempo, I mean, if I'm down, obviously I might want to go no huddle. If I'm up, I might want to chew clock. But that's something that I can do. Um, you know, I don't have to do that in the coaching adjustments necessarily. I can do uh, no huddle just by spamming uh, you know the wire triangle button. The only other thing, like I said, ball care. If you're running with the quarterback a lot, they're designed to fumble more, so you might want to put the ball care to conservative. Same thing goes with wide receivers. Doesn't necessarily go with running backs. But if you're up late in the game and you want to make sure you don't fumble, you might want to go conservative there as well. But that's pretty much it for offense. So let's go and let's switch over to the defensive side. Number one, auto flip uh, defensive play call. I typically, in the last one, I told you to take this off. And that's because when I set up a lot of blitzes, I like to control where the blitz is coming from by flipping the play. So for me, I still want to have my auto flip uh, defensive play call off, but I'll leave it on throughout most of the game. And if I'm sending a blitz, then I'll turn it on or I'll turn it off and then I'll, I'll, I'll set up my blitzes how I want to set up my blitzes. Next up, I'm going to go over cornerback matchups. If you're playing man coverage, you might want to use this more often than if you're playing zone coverage. Even if you're playing zone coverage match, you're typically going to want to match up your best cornerback to their best receiver, or if they have a really fast or tall receiver, you might want to go by speed or by height, but this is something that hasn't really changed either. Now, another one that really changed a lot is the defensive motion response. In the original video that I put out, I said that this doesn't do anything, whether it's on default or disabled, I noticed that you still get a defensive motion response regardless. Well, this is one of the things that I think that they patched and didn't tell us about, because once again, they don't really like to advertise their mistakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a play here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick a play. I'm gonna leave it to default for now. I'm in BYU's offense because this is something that I'm going to be using in future videos. So hit the like button or subscribe if you guys want to see that. But let's go ahead and let's pick a play called the shovel option. Although I can really do this out of anything. But I noticed it works best with the shovel option motion here. So let's go and let's pick that. You're going to see how when this uh, receiver motions into the slot that the defender follows. Which is something that I don't necessarily always want. This is a really good play by the way. I'm going to have some offensive videos about this play in a, in a little bit. But that motion is not something that I necessarily want. If I set up my base defense where I want this guy down in the box and I want this guy here covering, um, you know, covering the outside edge for whatever reason, say I expect my opponent to run and I want to make sure I have outside containment, I don't want them to move the second that the receiver moves. Now, obviously, if I move them, they're not going to move because that's something that's in Madden where if you move a guy, he's going to stay. But if your opponent's running his offense quickly, you might not always have that ability. I might want that outside containment, but I might not have time to switch on to him and move him manually. Say I just have time to just you know play underneath or something like that, and I want that guy to stay out there for that very reason to hold that edge down. Now he's inside; he's going to be much easier to block based off the fact that he's in closer to the line of scrimmage, which is not something that I would necessarily want. So that's why I say I personally like to disable this because when I set up my defense, I'm doing it with run fits and gaps and, and edge containment and all that stuff in mind, and I don't want a pre-snap motion to mess that up. But just to show you guys that this actually does work, we're going to pick the exact same play, the shovel option right tackle, and now you're going to see how this guy's not going to move. I didn't have to move him myself. He just stays right there, which is something that, like I said, in the past was not in the game. Another good example of how motions can manipulate your defense is something like this play here, the motion outside zone. You'll notice now that I have this set to default that when this receiver here motions in, he's also going to condense the deep zone and the seam flat. So let's go and let's watch for that motion. As you can see, the cornerback outside will follow. Both the cornerbacks shift in, and that's going to be a huge issue when it comes to running this outside run. As you can see right here, nobody's outside now because they followed the motion in. 
And now that my defensive backs follow that motion and condense the formation, you can see how much easier it is for the running back to use that to get outside as there's really nobody outside to cover this area now. So now we'll see once again, if I disable that, cover three defense is obviously weaker outside. As you'll notice, the deep zone is going to drop back and give up a lot of space underneath. So I don't expect him to necessarily shut this run down for a loss. But him getting moved in and the seam flag getting moved in just make it so that I have less outside containment. So this time I have it disabled. You'll notice how when this receiver moves, the cornerbacks and the seam flags don't move. And that basically allows for the cornerback to get down and play the run much faster as we stop him for about five yards less or more. As you can see on the next play, the cornerback does not react to that motion. And he plays the outside containment much better as he gets the tackle on the running back five yards down the field rather than 10 yards plus like it was last time. So since I like to set up my defense with run fits, gaps, and leverage all in mind, I don't want the uh, motion to mess that up. I don't want my opponent to be able to manipulate what I've set up. So I typically disable this. This is probably one of the biggest changes as far as coaching adjustments from the previous video that I made because, like I said, it didn't do anything last time. Now, when it comes to these next two, the option defense read key and the option defense pitch key, in the past, this was actually backwards. You had to set the option defense pitch key to conservative because it says here they would focus on the quarterback. In, in the past, it didn't. In the past, it focused on the pitch. It was, it was written or programmed to the exact opposite. Well, they fixed that. They actually patched that. Now, if you do conservative, it will focus on the quarterback, just like it says it will. And if you do aggressive, it'll focus on the pitch. So obviously now, in the past, I was saying go to conservative. But now, since they patched that and they reversed it, they fixed it, whatever, however it is, you want to make sure that you're setting your option defense pitch key to aggressive. When it comes to the option defense read key, you still want to go to conservative and focus on the quarterback because both of these are designed to do the exact same thing you always want to make sure that you're trying to turn the play back inside i'll go ahead and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about as we'll pick a speed option play and you'll notice how this defensive end here is most likely the pitch key defender so now that i have it set to aggressive his job is to go after the running back and that's exactly what he does you can see right there he holds up he waits he does exactly what he's supposed to do is he's going to make sure that, that that running back, if he gets the ball, he's just going to sprint out. So this is the animation you always want because basically where he is right now, he could stop the running back or the quarterback as he ultimately does both. He forces the quarterback to hold the ball and he stops him in his tracks. But all run defenses, you want to make sure that you're turning the run play back inside towards your linebackers, towards your safeties. That's where you're going to have the most help. Cornerbacks don't typically help you out too much outside. So other than that, we have a couple that we already went over. I don't typically change... Uh, strip ball and uh, tackling I typically just have them both to conservative because I, I find that regardless the computer doesn't really do a good job of forcing fumbles regardless whether it's a strip fumble which is what strip ball is based on doing whether it's tackling uh, when it comes to hit sticks I don't find that they they necessarily uh, get a lot of hit stick fumbles so to me since the user in my opinion gets the most fumble hit sticks anyway and the most strip uh, tackles anyway I find especially to put them to conservative and get the most positives you can out of this which is going to lower your chances of broken tackles Tackles, and it's also going to lower uh, the amount of yards that they gain, um, you know, after after contact. So to me, conservative on both is the best way to go. When it comes to zone drops, this is something where uh, in Madden they just recently changed, uh, so that might be a little bit different. But when I play college football, I leave these to default, and that's because I run cover three match pretty much the entire game. And if you change these, you're going to override the matching principles. Now, if you guys want to learn more about how to run cover three match properly, I already made a full breakdown video showing you guys how to do that. So I'll have that pop up on screen. Just click links if you guys want to see more. And other than that, until next time, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.